and we are live welcome to the 30th episode of the free skates podcast uh today is going to be all about free skating maintenance and today's also actually going to be a solo episode by the looks of it so um today's my lucky day i'm actually really excited i have my current set of free skates here uh, i've been known to really beat up my skates um a lot and just skate them all the time so if you take a close look at these wheels here they're actually pretty comically worn down to the point where they very obviously need replacing so that was part of the inspiration of today's episode um of the podcast just covering general basics of how free skate maintenance works what my recommendations would be for replacing each and every part and when that should happen and everything that comes with that. Um, so for those of you that are just rolling in, feel free to make yourselves known in the chat. I'll throw you up on screen. And um, <clears throat> throughout the episode, if any of you want to chime in physically, like um, on the actual podcast, uh, send me a DM over on Instagram, and then we'll try and make that happen. If you have anything to add throughout this episode, so um i couldn't decide whether to actually take these bearings out initially like before the podcast because i know sometimes i struggle with actually prying them out so you guys are about to watch me potentially struggle with that i need to actually get a uh, allen wrench okay so first step to actually um I mean, to taking the wheels off, you got to unscrew all these Allen bolts. Um, and I guess the first question that would come with this is like knowing when to actually replace your wheels. Uh, when they look like this, almost without a question, you should be ordering a new set from JMK's website uh, pretty soon because eventually what will happen is there's going to be no material left and it'll start to kind of split, whether it's in half or just on the edge of it. It's going to get kind of ugly. So, um, and then i do have some brand new sets of wheels right here and you can see the size the size difference is pretty dramatic wow yeah look at that so rolling over stuff is obviously gonna be a whole lot easier with this so i'm excited number one to have those bigger wheels and then also just to um uh uh have it match because i do like this color combo a lot with the with the mint so i'm gonna Quit talking. We're going to keep talking, but I'm going to get to actually getting these wheels off here. Um, so how often do you get new wheels? I mean, it's really just dependent for everyone, I would say. Um, maybe in the comments, you could drop your opinion, depending on like how often you change them personally. But for me, I skate basically every single day and I'm skating them pretty hard, carving pretty hard. I would say every two to three months is about how often I'm doing it. I may even be pushing it when I say that. It's probably closer to two. Um, some people, it's you know upwards of one to two years if they just cruise them casually every now and then. Um, those wheels, I mean, they're quality wheels. They're going to last you a while. But for someone like me, not so much. Change about every two months. So James Brown um, is killing it, always out there skating. So that sounds about right, every two months. Um, yeah, I wonder if it's even less than two months for me. I'm not sure. You, like Back when I was in college, it was closer to like six to nine months, maybe around there, maybe pushing closer to a year because it's just college cruising. But the more experienced I got, the more I wanted to just go out on intense, long sessions. And um, that time starts to decrease, obviously. So that's like how often to change them um it really just depends on you and if you're noticing wow my wheels are small my wheels are small this is really uncomfortable to ride it's it's up to you but when they start breaking down visually like they start getting like divots and splits and curves replace them uh jeff said i need new wheels after two weeks well, you might have set a new record. You and uh, Marco is a local to San Diego. Not JMK Marco, different Marco. Probably the fastest I've seen wearing down wheels. But he's out every single day. Uh, James says, I always skate on very rough city street services. Yep, that's a very important point. 
um, rough pavement is going to destroy your wheels so much faster. If you're always cruising on a smooth, almost like ice, like smooth as ice pavement, what do you call it? Just smooth pavement that doesn't have any grit. Those wheels are going to last you not forever, but like basically, I mean, they're not going to wear like they would on like gritty pavement. Um, yeah, so I have the wheels off of this nice bare free skate body right here. Let's see. Hopefully I can make this repair or not repair, but replacement within the hour because I'm going to do a lot of talking. But um, it's an idea of how it'll look. And then mint wheels for the mint skate. I think at this point I can kind of bring up the difference um, between classic and pros because you do have a decision to make. And it was very hard for me to make this decision. Which one to go with classic or pro. I like a lot of flip tricks, which is why I usually go classic. But recently I've been using other people's performance wheel skates and you can't really beat the fluidity of riding something like this. So now comes the comical part of me trying to, uh, these were classic, by the way, they just don't look like a real wheel anymore. So inserting the Allen key in there and then seeing how long it takes me to get eight of these out try it with brute force okay this might not be that flew across the room but that's okay so i'm not going to hit my camera so i'm not going to do it right here but a closer look inserting and then prying around the edges okay no uh if all the wheels are like this this should not take as long as i feared um so yeah this is a close look at a dirty used bearing is that rust? Oh no, it's just the lighting. So this is not really rusted. That's just some dirt. I could clean it. I think I'm gonna skip um, bearing cleaning for today. We do have a bearing cleaning tutorial on the uh, JMK Ride YouTube channel. I'm just rushing to get these new wheels on. Um, JMK bearings last a long time and these will still spin endlessly. They just have a little bit more grit to them than I would like. Uh, how to know when to replace bearings is a, you know, a good thing to know if your wheels are getting like crunchy and you're noticing they spin a lot slower and like stop within a couple seconds when you start spinning them. Um, it's fine if they make noise, but if they start to like, if you notice it's impacting how fast they're spinning, you really got to get in there and clean it and get that dirt out of the way. Um, and avoid water at all costs because that's, what's going to destroy your bearings and have you, um, you know, end up purchasing entire new sets. So if you try cleaning it, as we say in the bearing cleaning tutorial, if it just doesn't save the bearing, it's it's time to buy a new set and have replacements ready. So there's, there's one wheel done. I'll replace all of the bearings once I get them out. So for those of you that have just joined, um, taking these black wheels out, putting colorful pro wheels in what else to talk about so the wheels and bearings are two are very obvious parts of the skate to repair frequently or semi-frequently um i guess i shouldn't say frequently but they're the obvious things to repair in the skate uh the metal the actual steel and aluminum that make up the truck and deck in my opinion, shouldn't really ever need to be replaced so long as it doesn't get hit by, you know, like a bus or a train or something in some unfortunate accident. Um, that metal is going to hold up. So obviously the deck is going to wear down with dings from flips and throwbacks, and it's going to get that that straight edge to it from throws. But that doesn't, you know, affect a functionality by any means. So it's really up to you as far, far as those metal parts. Um I should also mention that laying down a towel is a great idea for this sort of thing because I'm getting my entire work desk dirty. So I'm going to do that. So how often to clean, how to clean. So how to clean bearings, as I said, is on the JMK Ride YouTube channel. Uh, grip tape, I think, is another thing to mention. We're not going to be replacing grip. Maybe that's another... Um, segment we could do in a future episode but sometimes the grip is pretty um, stubborn it's hard to get off and what I would recommend for that is getting a hair dryer and heating it up 
as you slowly peel it back and try to get it all off in one piece. Um, and then for protecting your grip so it lasts as long as possible, I would recommend these edge guards so that it doesn't slide on the grip as easily. Kind of act like a little lip on a phone case or something. Um, I've had this grip tape. It seems like I'm going to have this grip tape for getting close to a year. Yeah, I got this grip tape back in like September or October, and I haven't had to replace it. Only like the other parts of the skate. So i um, loving this grip, and it's still grippy. <clears throat> so I'm slacking on the wheel progress. I got to start on these ones. Desi and Anthony, uh, a blender. Hey, Jason, welcome. It says De Desi and Anthony were just changing their wheels a few minutes ago. I saw the notification that Desi was live. That is really funny that they were doing that. Maybe, maybe they, no, I'm not going to hijack their live stream and tell them to come on here, but that's funny. You definitely make made it look a lot easier. Oh, getting that. I, I swear to you, like this is probably one of the easiest times I've had with prying bearings out of wheels. Uh, hopefully I'm not jinxing it with this second skate, but no, it's usually harder for me. And if you ask anybody at the JMK headquarters, um, they have all seen me struggle time after time with this. So I just give my skates to Chris. And somehow he has a lot more strength than I do. So I'll give a little bit of visual rather than just doing it on my lap. Slide it out. Bearings pop out. Or bearings. Uh, spacers. Got two of these on either side of each wheel. Uh, for all of these parts, I'm assuming for everyone out there, everything's going to be dirty. So having a cloth, a rag, or like paper towels or something to just like wipe everything down or better yet, um, dipping them in the acetone you're using to clean your bearings. If you're doing that as well, you might as well shine up all your parts that way. Um, makes everything nice and shiny. Of course, they're going to get dirty right away again, but it's nice to have a blingy set of skates. They ended their live stream, but I think they were working on those bearings. Yeah. Okay, cool. Dope. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's worth wiping all this stuff off, but I guess I will. Uh, what else? So shock pads is an interesting subject. So if you don't know what the shock pads are, it's, oh, it's this rubber spacer that helps, um, for keeping the tension or keep, keeping the, the, the bolts that connects to the truck and the deck tightened. Um, without that, uh, there wouldn't be anything holding it together. Um, it also, it's a shock pad, so it reduces shock, shock absorbing. If you're in colder weather climates, and I found this out over time while skating like in the winter at Iowa State, there's the potential with a lot of stomps that those they can actually crack under like changing temperatures. I know that's a very, very, very specific issue for someone in a specific sport in a specific climate doing very specific you know stomp tricks but one thing led to another and uh my shock pads actually split which caused my skates to actually loosen over time and they stopped being able to tighten fully so i would endlessly tighten the bolts and it would not you know keep everything together so if you're having that issue maybe check the bottom of your shock pads and see if they're they're cracked on the on either end um and then for just tightening your cracked or not for just tightening your tightening your skate in general you don't have to take off your grip you can actually kind of find locate where that bolt is and then puncture it with your allen key and then it'll just be like a skateboard you can tighten it with the grip already there it's like the bolt will be bolt will be bolts will be visible so i'd recommend that um, for me personally, I prefer just tightening it all the way and then having the clean slate. But if you're in a pinch and you don't have extra new grip, that's what I would recommend. Got to get these bearings out. Honestly, I could have done all eight of these bearings within like the first minute. If I all eight of these bearings within the first minute, if I was committing to it, but um, I've been talking a lot easier as I was saying than it usually is. 
almost done. This this set is gonna look really good. Um, when I first upgraded to this lavender mint set, this is the color scheme I went with. Just all one color on each skate. All right. So bearings are still dirty, which makes me sad. I I think I'll just I think I'm just gonna rub them on the towel a little bit to get some of that dirt off. Ideally, I would be soaking them in an acetone bath, but not today. Uh, so the hardest part, as I was saying, is getting these bearings out of the wheels. Um, putting them back in is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Just takes a little bit of brute force. Um, making sure they're seated all the way. I'd recommend like a rubber mallet and like a, you know, a, a straight metal object to hit it while it's on a table. So you're not like stressing out the joints in your fingers. But um, yeah, there's seven, you, seven of you in here. If you haven't said anything, feel free to um, let me know you're here. But uh, got the new wheel here. This is the first bearing. And uh, I like to try to just use my thumb to see if I can press it. Yeah, that's okay. So this might be the more difficult part because I had the leverage of the Allen tool. It was pretty, pretty easy, but now I don't have that rubber mallet that I was talking about. Hmm. I'm going to need like a hammer of some kind. Okay. I'm going to see what I got in my closet. I mean, I have a I have a C clamp for working on a car, but I think that's a little overkill. So I'm just gonna try and hit hit it with a towel over the wheel and see how that works out. So covering it, this is not what I normally do. Usually, there's like better tools at JMK, but I am not at JMK right now, as you can see. Um, yeah, let me know if you guys have questions about freescape maintenance, and while you're in here, feel free to drop a like. It always helps. But uh, here goes nothing on this first one. Okay, so that worked. So it's seated. And then I'm going to show you how to make sure it's seated properly once um, that second bearing is in there. Two bearings per wheel. Eight total. Looks like it could use a little bit more. Okay. So it appears to be fully seated on both sides, or I think. <laughs> then we're going to check right now to see. If you move around this little center piece, this center silver thing, it should be touching the one on the other side, and you should be able to see it spinning. And as you can tell right here, I think, can you see it spinning? I want to be able to show that. Uh, try one more time. Hopefully it showed up. It is spinning on both sides, just when I spin it on one. So that's a success. Um, the rubber mallet thing uh, I was mentioning does help for just setting all your wheels out in front of you once you're done and hitting each one with a mallet. Um, I've seen Kyoki do that in some of his live streams. Um, it'd be a very useful tool to have right now. And I keep on going with these bearings. Okay. Oh, that one just slid in. Cool. Okay, so some of them are going to be easy. No, no rubber mallet needed. That one is not so easy. Okay, cool. My question for today is where is Chris B? Is he lurking in the shadows somewhere? I know you're in there. All right. Okay. So, you know, I don't know if you guys are... I don't know if you guys are going to be able to tell, but this is not spinning. So I need to keep hitting this 
and make sure they make contact contact in the very center with the spacers or else um, this is not gonna there we go yeah it's not gonna spin freely i don't know if you can tell but it kind of wiggles back and forth as it's spinning which is not a comfortable way to free skate so uh let's try and hammer these in a bit more sorry if it's like loud And hope this uh, more hands-on video is slightly entertaining for the five of you in here so far. Okay, so got it moving on the other side. Two wheels to go. Uh, now we're moving on to the wheels for the mint skate. That one just pushed right in. Maybe I can get one of those on camera. I guess the reason to stick around for this episode is to see what the skates look like when they're all put together. All right, so I got it in there. Let's see if I can push it. Oh, it's kind of going in. Mm, no. Dang it. I've had two go in super easily. Mm, it's kind of moving on the other side there, but... Hit it a couple more times. Get it seated properly. This is taking me like 10 times longer than I would take anyone else at the shop, but there we go. Moving. Got one wheel left. Exciting. Probably use this set for this week's YouTube video. So you'll see them in action. Come on. There we go. One bearing left. Get the banner up. Cool. And will it just go in? Oop, oh, maybe. So, um, while if you guys have any questions of like about skate maintenance, let me know. I'm gonna move on to uh, loose bolts. Um, so I mentioned the holes in the grip to like make sure it's tightened without having to actually peel up the grip. If your skates ever get loose, sometimes you can. Uh, I guess if you over tighten them, uh, there's the possibility of stripping your bolt if you. Um, are too aggressive with it um the metal in the bolt isn't you know of the highest of the highest grade so it's possible that you could strip it if you are being too forceful in that case just i mean the obvious solution would be to order new bolts and we do have little packs of those on our website i've had to do that once in college i learned it the hard way and that was the result of my shock pad being cracked and um Learn that the hard way too. So you should get a little hand skate tool with, oh, with the bearing press on it. Maddie has one of those in the office. I should, I should, uh, well, see, I don't know if I should. I am fortunate enough to have access to that kind of thing. Um, so to have one at my personal apartment maybe wouldn't be the most necessary, but for anyone watching, like it's a nice, that's a nice little handy to, handy tool to have a bearing press so it looks like i have all of the bearings in do one more comparison of like the size difference here absolutely massive this is going to be real nice and the bearings still spin just fine even though they got some dirt on it cool i um Maybe I can show more like what it looks like on my desk here. Maybe I move the wheels over here. To show the process of like actually putting the wheels inside the skate. All right, there we go. Is that good? Got the mic right here. All right. So for putting the wheels back in, See if we have any more comments. All right, cool. 
you'll want to put the wheel in first and then take the two spacers and keeping everything centered right here, drop them flat in the sides. Just like that. They're kind of just floating there, rolling inside this black ring part. And then next you'll want the side with the, the hex bolt, or that's just what I'm going to call it. Line, that, line it up with that spacer and then line up the axle with the other spacer and meet in the middle. And then shimmy that wheel around until it meets both sometimes. Um, this is where if you don't have the bearings fully seated, it will not fit. So that step I mentioned earlier with checking, making sure the the bearings are seated will save you a little bit of hassle. Apparently not saving it enough in my case. Come on. There we go. So it's in, so now I'm gonna start threading it, hand threading it, and then finish it off with, ideally, maybe you have a drill bit with one of these on it, a little Allen key, but uh, I'm gonna do the manual way of doing things. Tighten it all the way. And, got a nice brand new wheel on there that's gonna spin for a long time even though I didn't clean the bearings because I've been avoiding water. It still makes sound though. Maybe you can hear this. So, not perfect, but it'll do the job. Next one, I'll just keep down here. So, just chuck the spacer in on both sides. Get your hex nut, I guess you would call it actually. I don't know, bolt nut. Axle on the other side, shimmy that wheel around to meet in the middle, hand the thread, and finish it off. I have not seen my skate look like this in quite some time. Does it not have a built-in spacer in the very Yeah, so I can talk about that. Good question, Gabriel Haynes. Are you just seeing Gabriel Haynes on TikTok? So... Uh, as you can see, beautiful mint skate. Been wanting the full color for a long time. Um, so yeah, the spacers and the bearings. Ooh, I just put the bearings in. I want to show you what that looks like. I don't think I have old bearings laying around. Maybe I do. One second. Might have one bearing that I can use as a demonstration. I really don't want to. There we go. Yes, I do. I do. <clears throat> so... The spacers that they talk about in the bearing is that protrusion right there. And that will meet in the middle. So when we're talking about, I see James said something about fully seated. Didn't know for a while. Um, didn't know for a while and be a great note to add to the bearing maintenance video. Yes, maybe we can make an update at some point. That's like one of the initial videos we made. I'm gonna, I'm gonna full screen this. Okay. Dope. So yeah, no, the, the, the seating is important because, and then that that that's that space right there is what's getting seated. They're touching in the middle. Um, and then what did what did Gabriel ask? Did you change it? I am, I am, I am struggling with keeping up with these comments here. All right, we're gonna get back. Does it not have a built-in spacer for the bearing? Yes. Yeah, so there's the spacer there, but then there's the spacer that goes outside of the bearing to seat it in the truck correctly, and that goes right here. So that's to keep the wheel from wiggling back and forth on the axle. So both are important, um, but this built-in spacer in the bearing is what makes it not so compatible with you know other models of wheels. Um, because they're proprietary JMK. Didn't do a deep clean. Yeah, 
didn't do it didn't clean the bearings um i don't have the materials here at home and i just also i'm not interested in taking the time to try and take my needle and try out the caps and everything we usually do that as like a group effort we usually do that as a group effort at jmk we just get all of our skates together and clean everything i got my first skate, pair of skates in the mail last week my wheels are already pretty dirty and gunky what kind of ground are you skating on i mean it's, they're gonna get dirty i mean it's the ground outside um ideally if you've been um avoiding water they should be um they, they should be spinning pretty well still you like the lo-fi music in the background i'm glad yeah it's a, a friend of mine does um royalty free beats so i have I just have that chilling uh the 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 channel is called zen buster music if you want to check that out on youtube Yeah, supporting you at TikTok. Yeah, nice. I, I see you in the comments. Thank you so much for the support, Gabriel. Got another Gabe in the chat. All right. Okay. We have one half. We need the other half. On to the lavender skate. Uh, you can make it visible again. Okay. Again. Uh, find two spacers, chuck them in the sides. Pretty straightforward. Um, once you've done this a lot, this just becomes, I don't know, second nature. It's, 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 it's not hard. It's pretty easy. But for me, the first time I do things, it usually takes me, you know, two times the amount of time because I'm just being careful with every step. Sometimes it's easy to forget a spacer or something like that. <clears throat> All right. Final wheel. We're almost there. Missing one spacer. There we go. Found both. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, if you have questions about maintenance or anything in general, about free skating or JMK or the future. We're in a portion of the stream where you guys can feel free to say anything. Here, I'll uh, actually put up a banner here. Q&A. Uh, Ricky says, I've been practicing on the sidewalks and asphalt on my neighborhood. Despite them being dirty, they still roll really well. That's good to hear. Um, yeah, asphalt, especially like if it's like, you know, black asphalt. I could get on your wheels depending on um, the surface, I guess. Some, some, some asphalt really rubs off on your wheels, but um, depending on your riding style. Oh, ooh, one thing to mention. Um, one important part of this video that I have forgot. I'll actually start it. Start talking about that once I get this wheel in because I need to finish this set but it involves um the wearing of your wheels so there's this is something that can be worked on um how evenly your wheels are being worn over time but to a certain extent it's kind of reliant on your style as a rider which is something that's hard to change so what I mean by wear is if you saw my black wheels from the beginning before I took them out they were pretty like wavy and curvy and unevenly worn. And for many, it's not completely even and flat across the board. It's usually like, like a cone, like almost trumpeted to one side where it's wider on one side of the wheel and then narrower. And then for the other wheel, it'll be the flip wider and narrower. I'll try and give you a visual of that. But the, the solution for that is... Uh, kind of like wheels on a car. Um, you want to be periodically rotating the wheels on your free skates because otherwise they're just going to wear to no end um, unevenly. And you're going to be skating on some diagonal wheels. So the, the important thing about that, though, is when you get in the middle of the wheel swap process, you don't want to mix it up, like accidentally put it back the way it was. So make a mental note of what the wheels look like. I'll grab an old box of wheels and show you what I'm talking about.
All righty. Y'all still here? Cool. So I think I have another box. This is kind of hilarious. Got a whole box of wheels right here, and this is not all of them. So, yeah. Maybe I can start auctioning these off or something. Not really, but maybe I can find some uh, some cool history here. So this one's pretty worn. About the same amount as these ones. But I want to, oh, it's actually a little bit smaller. But I want to find one that's like severely worn to one side. So you see this one is pretty even, right? Like that's not too bad. <laughs> nice. Is it a Lakai shoe box? I hope it is. Not sponsored by Lakai. Not yet anyways. Um, so this wheel is a great example of what I'm talking about. So if you free skate, your wheels might look like this. And then for the other wheel, it'll be flipped the other way around. Um, as that starts happening, I would recommend flipping them um, so that it, you know, carves down on the other side. And then ideally, hopefully they get flat, but that's also how they end up looking like this where I don't know if you can see it, but it's curve and then a curve. Uh, that, that's just what happens. If you ride like that, you ride like that. You can try to do things to fix it, but at the end of the day, it's just your style. Nice. Yeah, I think I have another, another one of these accumulating wheels in my closet as well. Some of these have old bearings in them, so maybe someday I'll try and recover these and clean them. Never a bad thing. Yeah, some of these are extremely worn down. You can't even see the full JMK logos anymore. That's also when you know. When you're like starting to not see the JMK logo, like it's wearing down into it, that's that's too small. You need new wheels. Um, Ricky says, I feel like cleaning them off with a Q-tip, but well, will that also take away the lubricant? I've been holding off because I'm still unsure. The dirt is just going to go right back on there. I think um, the the seals are on the bearings for a reason. So you're not actually getting a ton of dirt up and inside your bearing because it's just coated on the outside. It's it's going to look like that. Like no matter what, I feel like it's going to coat with dirt. But the important thing is like you're not getting water that, you know, penetrates into the bearing. As long as that doesn't happen. Um, I would say only worry about the dirt, the occasional times you decide to give them a deep clean, you know, every every few months, I would say, what is never a bad idea. But um, it's like being afraid to get like white shoes dirty or something, in my opinion. Like it, it's going to happen, right? Like I got white Lakai's and I was like afraid to wear them. But then it's like, why do you buy the Lakai's? So the bearings, it, it means you're skating them. Um, don't be afraid to clean them every few months. Jack says, hello, Jack. Jack says, I used to rotate my wheels by taking them off, but I but realized all you have to do is flip the skate upside down. I usually do my throwbacks to accomplish that. Huh. I always thought... Huh? I'm trying to think because me personally, I don't pay attention to which way I'm riding. So they're like 50-50 this way or this way under my foot but i feel like regardless it's still going to wear the same way i could be wrong but um once i do end up physically rotating them things start to wear out pretty evenly and then start going back towards the side i changed it to because you know over time okay so time to throw these in the wheel the wheel collection that just went across the room. I don't really care. The stars of the show today are this, not brand new, but revived lavender mint set that I'm really excited about. And this is awesome. So throwbacks are finally going to be a lot smoother. Throw tricks in general and riding is just going to be super flowy. James Brown says, yeah, for the longest time I rode my skates one way. 
with the grip tape facing one direction every time in a warmer skates unevenly so quick. Ride them both ways. Yeah. I used, I feel like, I don't know, did we all used to do that? With the JMK logo on the pitch black skates that I started with, I was like, oh, it always has to be on the bottom, the logo. Like this, this JMK graffiti always needs to be right side up, but no, it does not. I just don't see it as a free skate. As long as it's the last skate, just make sure it ends up under your left foot. Yeah, definitely a bad habit. Good point. So, um, uh, I don't know if this is relevant, but the reason I didn't go for classics this time around is because I like the pretty look of like the, the pastel, all one color on each skate. And we don't have lavender classics in at the moment, only mint. So that's why I went with black classics for that last rotation. But um, I think the other thing to mention about wheels and maintenance and wearing down over time I don't know how true this is, but what I've heard is that um, with no, I'm not even going to I'm not even going to state this as fact, but more of it just to bring up as a discussion. I'm not sure which wheel has more material. Is it the classic wheels or is it the round wheels? Because I think I've heard someone say one of them is just the other, just with material shaved off. Looks like I don't, they're basically they're like the same. I don't know. I don't think that's relevant actually. But uh, if you want to know which wheels to get, we have a video I made a couple of months ago about the difference between classic and pros. Uh, pretty easy to find. Um, it's on our YouTube channel, JMK Red Free Skates. So thankfully, I did lay down some towels. Saved my desk a little bit of uh, cleaning I would have to do. I'll throw the Q&A banner back up here. Oh, it's already up. Feel free to ask questions. Skates up here. Maybe I can put them next to me. Pretty excited about that. That's that's pretty cool. If nobody has any questions within the next couple of minutes, I might do you know a little bit early of an end to this episode. Ooh, got a question. But yeah, I might wrap it up pretty early here. Um, Fifteen minutes or so early, because we are done with the skate maintenance. How long did it take for your legs to not die after five minutes of slight uphill? Oh yeah, because you just started, right? Um, uh, there was no day where it just like went away. Like when I go uphill, you know, five years into skating, it's still like, it's like, you know, if you're a runner and you're trying to run up a hill, it's still going to be slightly more exhausting than if you were just running. Um, you'll just be able to handle more of it. So at first it was terrible. Like my legs were burning. It's like, I finally learned to pump and I was able to use the pump to go uphill, but it was not comfortable. So I didn't have to fight through it a lot. Legs would be sore for like, you know, the whole week, but like it only gets better. So um, make it routine, um, start to tackle slightly, slightly more and more steep hills. Uh, obviously, you can start on just a slight slope going uphill, but it's a fun challenge to see how steep you can take it. In our, in our uphill tutorial, we have um, some pretty steep hills that we tackle. But uh, yeah, just over time, it got better, I would say. I don't know if I have a sp specific answer as to how long, but I used them for college commute. And uh, it was nice to learn that I could um, go up without having to hop off and then walk up the hill because that's no fun. But hope hope it gets better for you, Ricky. Sounds like you're in that initial stage of, you know, learning how to not, you know, have your muscles give out immediately. <clears throat> how many pairs of free skates do you have? I have one currently. So I was rotating between like one and two. If 
for like a long time while I lived down here in San Diego. But since we have the free skate meetups, um, what we've done is take like, you know, put together our free skates and use um, dedicate them for those Thursdays for people to use them and um, wear those down that way. So um, everything of mine and others have kind of just been donated to the group, the group effort. And uh, we all ride typically just a single set. So, so Maddie has a set he uses it in his videos and Jeff and then me. This is mine. I only really need one. Um, this video is how to maintain that one set. Um, but if you're in a situation that most people are in and you're you know on your own and trying to teach people, a second set is totally something that you should be doing because um, you can teach while you're on the skates and that's great. So that's what I did when I was the ISU. I had, did I have two pairs? For a little bit there, I had two pairs. So highly recommend that. I know some people in this chat already have, I don't even know how many pairs Jack has. He's got like a lot, I think. Same with James, I don't know. We are free skate nerds in here. And there's not a problem with that. But any more questions in these next couple minutes? I will begin wrapping it up. Ricky says, is that a violet or a lavender truck? I really want a purple and gold set. Purple and gold sounds sick. So we do have gold parts. This is lavender. So lavender is more like of a deep pinkish purple. So what you could do is like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Violet. Violet is the deep pinkish purple. Pinkish purple. Lavender is like very pale. Not pale. You know, it's lavender and it matches all these parts really well. Edgeguard is a little more dull, but it still matches. Um, but yeah, I'd recommend like a violet wheel and then maybe the gold truck alternating and then violet and then something with grip, gold grip. I don't know. It sounds like a dope. That was my high school colors. Fun, fun fact purple and gold. I think I'm at like 13. I don't think anyone. And this chat has you beat, let alone the entire free skating community. Are you kidding me? That is a lot of sets. That's incredible. Like, I knew Jack had a lot, or at least I assumed, but I didn't know it'd be 13. Tell me, tell me that that's not crazy. We really like the violet and mint. They look clean. So I think I might be screwing up my words. Lavender, lavender and mint. I, I do like this. I think this is the, I keep saying this is the only set that I went on the custom tool and then immediately made something and was like, that's what I want. Um, Cause as long as the custom tool has been out, I have been so indecisive of like, even before the custom tool came out, I've always been like, for a while I've been into like photo editing. So I was able to like Photoshop my own sets. It would take longer, but I would never be able to decide. But I sat down when it came time to get my, um, you know, 21 set picked out, 2021 set picked out. And this was immediate. And then I slapped the script on and I was like that, you know, that's it. Me and my brother combined and some are free lines. Nice. So that makes sense, but that's still a lot of skates. When are you going to build a custom JMK set for your podcast? Like as a prop? That'd be cool. Um, oh, are, are you, are you, are you, are you pointing out these free lines? Um, uh, BS Zero Man. I think, I think that was a reference to the free lines I have in the background. Yeah, I should, I could replace them with the Free Skates podcast prop. I don't know what colors that, was, that would be, but. Oops, meant to say lavender. Yeah, I mean, we're both mixing them up. You could. Oh, I couldn't pick a single color when I chose my custom pair. Right, it's it's difficult. But something about these. It's two-tone pastel with Isamu grip. You can't go wrong. And then this is actually a misprint, too. So it's like a limited... Um, this isn't like the typical graffiti art, wall art one. It's like, I screwed up. But it looks cool anyways. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, maybe I can get those replaced. I still haven't confirmed if they're real anyway. So for all I know, they could be, be just fake cheapskates. But they feel heavy. They feel like they were the original ones. So got them for 20 bucks. Okay. So... Unless there's any more questions, I think we might start closing this out. Thank you all for joining this podcast. There's still nine of you in here uh, on our way out. Feel free to let me know that you were here. And uh, it's been fun hanging with you, Jason, James, Gabriel, Ricky. Who else? Michael and Jack. Very cool. So I hope you enjoyed me realizing my dreams in this podcast and um, maybe got something out of those maintenance tips. Tried to go over everything. Uh, Jack does have a question. Have you or anyone in here had to replace any other parts besides wheels and bearings? So I, yeah, no problem, Ricky. Uh, Yes. So I was talking about us being in the Midwest, Jack. Um, You know, we have some cold climate Um, and I don't know if you've experienced this, but with raising and lowering temperatures and doing a lot of stomps somehow on both skates. I think it was both the rubber and the shock pad split down the middle, which caused the skate to never be able to be fully tightened. So I would endlessly like strip the bolt and then I would have to ask John for more bolts. And then in this process, like once I finally took my skates apart, I realized the shock pad is split. So that's, you know, something that I didn't know initially. So there's that, but I haven't had to replace, you know, if I replaced anything specific, it was because there was like a leftover part at JMK or something. And I wanted to get a different color of deck or something, but it's not entirely necessary. Wheels and bearings are like the only thing. Grip tape is the other thing. Actually. Yeah. I mean, now that you mentioned it, it's been every single part except for trucks and deck. If we're talking about like functionality, I've had to replace edge guards back when they weren't as durable. I replaced grip because I screw up and I like get them screwed up on the ground, wheels, bearings, shock pad, even so that, uh, and nuts and bolts. Cause I've stripped them at the top here. So yeah, the only thing, um, intact has been, you know, the strongest part of the skate, uh, understandably. So it's the steel and aluminum truck and deck 11 you 11 of you in here just as we're trying to close it out when are you doing another podcast gabriel this is once a week tuesdays at 3 p.m pacific um usually we have a couple guests on here uh let's see or me and chris and then another person or me and jeff and another person sometimes it's you know more of jmk sometimes it's solo this is i think the only fully solo one that we've done so far, episode 30. So that's that's cool. Uh, Jack says about another shock pad before as well. Yeah, I mean, also, like, if you're just taking apart your skates and for some reason you don't like the fact that your shock pad isn't clear anymore, I suppose that's a reason to get a, another shock pad. I mean, I don't know that it increases the functionality anymore if it's, it's still intact, but... Tech says, hey, hey Tech, um, I've replaced my grip tape and I'm planning on getting another set of decks to, to make a stationary practice deck. Another set of stationary practice deck. Interesting. What are you putting the deck on? Are you not attaching the deck to anything? I'm curious. Huh. When are we getting wood decks? Um, not in the pipeline at the moment, as far as I'm aware. Um, that is something that they did with Freeline and I think the others would have some more specific info as to what, why, why we may not be doing that. Um, whether it's like durability, chipping is something that I would imagine would be an issue with, uh, lots of different tricks and stuff, not as durable as, as the metal, but there could be more to it. Maybe that's a DM question for the JMK Instagram, maybe. It's a good question. I don't fully know the answer to it. 
but we have I keep saying I'm gonna end this early and we're coming up on an hour so this is actually turning out pretty good thank you guys for all the questions tech says I want to stick some velcro on the bottom and stick them to furniture slider pads and it'd be fun on the carpet I mean that sounds dope I mean any 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 way to expand the I don't know what the word is possibilities of free skating like you're trying out new stuff which is really cool I've seen people practice flip tricks with just like a brick which is I think is hilarious like practicing kick flips no free skate involved just a brick and you're like rolling the brick rolling the brick so that it flips um I don't know if you would compare that to like a balance board or something but pretty innovative Jacob CK says, is that like how skateboarders will sometimes put socks on the wheels to practice certain tricks? Yeah, or uh, I know nothing about skateboarding, but I, I would also imagine it's kind of similar to like literally when you only have a skateboard deck, right? And uh, you can still practice ollies and kickflips, and, I think, and stuff. But without the wheels for how free skates work, it would be hard to do any sort of tricks with no truck supporting it, right? For throws or like a flip. If it's just like flat on the ground it'd be hard to do anything with it i'd be curious to see what you do with it though tech wooden cruiser skates that'd be cool i just like that they're so lightweight it could be cool for you know a difference in like weight shift of the skate and how it reacts to certain things it could be cool maybe throws would act differently og freeliners would know the answer better than i would tech says also i want to put them on wood blocks yeah Okay, so I, I like the sound of that. Just get a, a block of wood and just drill the decks in. That'd be cool. St stationary practice. I guess I'm on the skates enough, and it doesn't rain here in San Diego, basically at all. So I'm just on the skates outside anyways. But also that sounds cool. Like to just be able to practice in my room if it's like 11 at night or something. And annoy the downstairs neighbors, maybe, with all my stops one foot on a skate other on my diy balance board that's dope that's really cool i screwed a blank deck to a four by four block practice switch and flip tricks i need to start doing this this sounds awesome expand my um i guess experience with like free skating related things i've never tried that so Gabe, what's your go-to or fave trick? Um, anything involving a kickflip, but I would say specifically a kickflip switch it. Or a kickflip switch it out of any trick. No matter how inconsistently I can still land them, um, they are still crazy fun, and it's a fun challenge to see how, how, how much I can improve uh, as I practice. We got Desi in the chat. Just in time for uh, before we end this. Hello, Desi. I was cleaning my skates today, and this is perfect timing. Who was saying that? Uh, I think Ricky was, or someone was saying. Oh, Jason was saying that you and Anthony were changing, changing wheels. That's cool. Yeah. The uh, so Desi, I um, just added added to my wheel graveyard today. Um, my classic black wheels that are now destroyed in favor of replacing with beautiful pastel colored proformance wheels that I've been missing for a while. So those two right now. <clears throat> yeah, I heard about the bearings. They were surprisingly easy for me today. So I guess I ended the podcast in good timing. I would have been here for forever trying to like, yeah, try them out. Usually it takes me a lot longer, but these are the skates, the classic two-tone or single color skates. I love these. I want to skate these right now. Pastels are in fact the best. I don't know if this will never not be my favorite color combo. We'll see. Ever, never, not. You know what I mean? That's cool that you got some skate maintenance in. That's uh, it's never a bad thing to ride a fresh set every time so we are 
up on an hour. So I would like to say to all of you in here, thank you so much for joining this podcast. Today was a a chill one, but a fun one. Hope you got something out of my free skate maintenance and maintenance tips. Why are there 13 people in here now as I'm ending? Uh, feel free to make yourself known as we we close this out. I want to know that you made it. But uh, so for for the future, these podcasts take place on every Tuesday at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific time on the Free Skates podcast channel. Subscribe if you are not already. Uh, and then we're also on audio platforms under the Free Skates podcast. So thank you guys for joining me today. It was a fun one. And um, I'll see you next week uh, with a special guest. Real quick before you go, Ricky says, how often do you guys get new shipments? New Violet trucks. The Violet trucks are out. Hmm. Um, they must have not been in the shipment that just came in. Maybe they're coming in soon. Um, it's every now and then I would, this is a random number. This is totally not accurate, but I would estimate, you know, every, you know, six months we get like a big shipment in of like a big restock of things that we have to order ahead of time because of the way shipping and factories are working at the moment and the times of the world. So, um, they're big bulk things. Um, Maybe if you send a DM directly to Instagram, we can make sure and catch that and and give you some context on if we do have it and any amount. And if we don't, if we're getting it in soon on JMK Instagram. Um, hopefully we do. Hopefully you can get that for your violet and gold skates. Good podcast. Have a great week. Thanks, Tech. Thanks, Gabriel. Thanks, Jack. And thank you, everyone else. I will see you next week on Tuesday. Thank you, Ricky. All right. See you next week. Bye. Later, Desi. Later, Desi.